What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Dylan Talks Tone. Today, oh, we have something really cool. This is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. This is something I've been wanting to show you for a long time, something that I wanted to get for a long time. Before we get started, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, the like button. We just talk about guitar stuff on this channel, basically. And uh, we have a few videos a week that that's what we do. And uh, there's a join button down there if you want to support the channel. There's some links in the description if you want to support the channel. And there is a Patreon down there if you want to support the channel as well. Uh, you know, when we make uh, guitar videos and we choose products for reviews to do videos, and then extending out into our normal guitar playing lives, a lot of the choices that we make are based you know, sometimes they're based on our economics, sometimes they're based on choosing a particular tool for a particular job, you know, you need a particular piece of gear to help you with a gig, uh, sometimes you're exploring your tone and you want to try to shape that in one way, so you order this particular pedal, sometimes you're trying to get the best value out of, let's say you have an X amount of dollars set aside to um, you know, to, to buy a piece of gear and you want to get the best value out of it, right? So you watch a bunch of reviews and you try to get the best out of it. That's what we do, right? Like we watch YouTube for, I do it all the time for all kinds of things. All my other hobbies too, mountain bikes and knives and guns and all the other guitars and everything that we do, right? That's what we do in life. Today, we're going to do none of that. Today, we're going to talk about a completely separate part of our brain. So I want you to take and set aside all of those value propositions, and I want you to think about cool stuff. When you want something that's truly cool, that's just cool, you just want it because it's a neat thing, because everything about it is good, because you just wanna kind of surpass and just have the coolest thing possible in this particular segment. What's weird is, we're gonna talk about travel guitars. my friends, is the McPherson Touring Travel Guitar. You may see it and realize that it's very similar uh, in look to the McPherson Sable acoustic guitar, that full-size acoustic guitar that I have, uh, the 25 and a half inch scale, fully carbon fiber uh, acoustic guitar that uh, you've seen on this channel many times. I use it all the time. It's like one of my favorite guitars I own. So this is the touring version of that and it is meant to be a travel guitar so it is a 22 and three quarter scale length guitar uh, that is 36 and a quarter inches long so let's just start from the outside and go in and i'll just show you some very interesting and very unique things about this guitar that make it very different from some other things that you may see on other huge websites on the internets. Uh, I mean, we might as well start with the case. So it comes with a custom-made Reunion Blues gig bag. It is phenomenal gig bag, really good. I have one for my full-size one too. In the gig bag comes the guitar, it straps in there nice, it's perfectly, it, it's really cool. Uh, comes the feedback buster for this very unique sound hole that we will get to in a moment that all McPherson guitars have. And then it also comes with another saddle because this guitar does not have a truss rod, which is the way it should be if the guitar was made properly. So we'll get into that, and I know that's a hang up for a lot of people, but we're gonna explain that in a couple of minutes.
It also comes with, you know, a polishing cloth and the normal cool stuff that a guitar comes with. It comes with elixir strings on it. This guitar does not have elixir strings on it. This guitar has Stringjoy Foxwood acoustic guitar strings. Uh, it has 13s on it, which is very interesting. And as you hear it played and you see me play it, you'll see that it's not stiff. You would think that 13s would make it stiff, but we'll get into why in a moment. Let's talk about the specific features of this brand of guitar and what makes it super unique. First of all, let's get quality control out of the way. Uh, Matthew McPherson, McPherson Guitars, everything they ship is perfect. Let's just say right now, they go to such an extent to make sure that every guitar is perfect that you basically don't need to, I'm not gonna even say basically, full stop, you do not need to worry about quality control. The guitar will be perfect. Everything is plecked. We've got Gold Evo frets. Uh, we've got Goto uh, tuners. We've got uh, the carbon fiber graphite nut here, which is uh, compensated to a matched saddle that you saw the saddle in the case had a serial number on it, was actually made and matched for this guitar. These saddles have serial numbers on the bottom that match this guitar. It's not mass produced. They're actually made for this particular instrument. We've got a C-shaped neck here with uh, a very comfortable profile. Like I mentioned, it's 22 and 3 quarter scale length. And let's talk a couple of things about the specific and different construction methods of McPherson guitars in general. Their wooden guitars as well as their carbon fiber guitars. We've got a cantilevered neck here. Now when you glue the tail of the neck to the top, that stops the top from vibrating in that area because you've got that top, that that fretboard is glued to that top so it can't really vibrate. So this is cantilevered over the top much like a violin for example where this right here is not being impeded by the fretboard of the guitar. The neck construction. Uh, there is no truss rod in this neck. Uh, we've toured the, the factory. We have a video of that. They talk about the engineering and the shape of all the stuff inside here. The bottom line is this guitar does not move. Before we move on, we should talk about a couple of things and doubts and naysayers that people say about not having a truss rod. You may think of a truss, not having a truss rod and think Sears guitar from the 60s. This is not that. This is 2023. There's been a lot of engineering and time that have gone into this. Why do we need a truss rod? The only reason we need a truss rod in a guitar is because as we counteract the tension of the strings that pull this way, we need a way to counteract that tension and the truss rod pulls the, the neck back. A neck with no truss rod in it can do that. The only problem is, is that as atmospheric changes happen and various temperature uh, and humidity changes happen, that can move around a little bit and a couple of times a year we have to adjust our truss rod based on weather conditions and humidity and where we live and etc. With this particular carbon fiber construction, you do not need that because it is so stiff. There are other brands of carbon fiber guitars that have truss rods. It is because they are not engineered to this level. This guitar does not need one. Well, you're gonna say, well, I want to adjust how I play. That's what the adjustable saddles are for. And let's really get to the bottom of it. On an acoustic guitar, you do not adjust the action of your guitar with the truss rod. If you're doing it that way, you're doing it wrong. You need to set the truss rod to be basically flat on an acoustic guitar, really. Um, and then, or a little bit of relief, which is actually milled and plucked into this particular neck. And then set the height of the strings with the saddle. 
Um, that sounds counterintuitive, but in practice, it works perfectly. And there will be a bunch of people that'll get in the comments and say, that doesn't make sense. I have to have a truss rod. That's a deal breaker for me. Well, let me tell you what, after playing this thing for a couple of years, living at one of these, living in a motorhome, driving all over the country, changing string gauges, changing string brands, changing string tensions, never once has this come up for me. I've never one time had to worry about adjusting anything once I picked my saddle height and decided what I was gonna do. I could change whatever I wanted about this guitar. Tunings, string gauges, weather conditions. We lived in a motorhome. We were all over the place. Not one time have I ever had an issue with this. So you, have, you need to set aside the normal thought process with a guitar and replace it with a guitar that all of those issues have been engineered out of. Uh, all of the problem solving things that we have about a normal wooden guitar, you just take those away because those things have been engineered out of this instrument. See how the sound holes in a wrong spot? Quote unquote wrong spot? Pretty interesting, right? Uh, Mr. McPherson's idea behind this is when you put the hole in the middle, you force the top to vibrate at the edges, which inherently vibrate less because they're closer to the edge. Why not let the middle of the guitar vibrate more where you're gonna have more motion, right? So move the sound hole to the side. Very cool. It does make miking the guitar a little different. You kind of pick a little different spot for the mic if you're gonna mic it um, uh, for playing, which is, it, well, you know, whatever, it's cool. You just kind of compensate for that. But other than that, it's fine. This has an LR Bags uh, pickup in it, which you have been hearing or will hear as we continue to play this. It weighs about four pounds and the action and the playability and the everything is unbelievable. Now let's talk also about this weird string gauge anomaly that you might think is hard to get used to. 13s on an acoustic guitar for a lot of people is too heavy. I personally like 13s. All my acoustic guitars have 13s on them. I have tens on all my electrics, but I have 13s on all my acoustics, except for my close carbon fiber guitar. That's got 12s on it because the neck construction is different. This has 13s on it. So we've got this shorter scale length that kind of makes up for the tension of a 13 and it really equalizes and works perfectly. Uh, and as you have seen, as I've been playing it, it's very comfortable. You would think 13s are gonna hurt my hands, 13s are too stiff. But at this scale length, remember the shorter the scale length, the lower the string tension, the compensation of that is absolutely perfect. It's super, super fun. It makes it really fun to play and it actually makes you approach the instrument differently than a 25 and a half inch scale guitar. And it makes you kind of just play different. It's, it's really, really cool. I really, really like it. I've been playing this guitar every day. This has been my couch guitar pretty much since it came in. Let's talk value. First of all, let's just get this out of the way. This thing's $3,000, okay? And obviously, the quality that you're getting here is, there's nothing better than this. This guitar is the best one of these. I've played all of the carbon fiber brands, the other ones that we can think of, and the other ones that are relatively expensive too. I've played them all. Um, and I know this is an objective, not in a, this is a subjective opinion, but these are the best. Um, they, as far as quality is concerned, as far as, as far as quality of engineering, and that's what I really, I really enjoy, right? If, if you follow this channel, you know I love the engineering aspect of things. The fact that it does not have a truss rod is unbelievably cool. Uh, the fact that the way it feels in your hand, it, this is an excellent guitar. Is it for everybody? No. But if you like cool stuff, and you want to travel around, or if you want a guitar for your living room, I would say this is something that you should get your hands on. This touring size specifically is super fun at 36 inches. I play it like I would approach a parlor guitar. Now a parlor guitar is a full scale guitar in a smaller body, but just the feel and everything of this thing it just makes you play differently. Even if you own the full size one of these or any full size 25 and a half inch guitar, even if you don't, or 24 and three quarter, even if you don't travel, having this size and this format as completely a different thing, not a compare to, 
not a this is as good as, not of any of those other value propositions, but standing on its own, full stop, it is an instrument that just holds its own place for me. Like, I could have other guitars, obviously, I do have other guitars. In fact, I have, this is, I have three carbon fiber guitars now. This one is, it holds its own place. Even the other carbon fiber guitars that I have that are this size are different. It's, it's like owning a couple of different, well, it is owning a couple of different brands, a couple of different styles. It makes you play the guitar differently. So don't look at this as, is it as good as, is it worth the money? It's definitely worth the money. It's definitely the best constructed. But even more importantly than that, the way you play it, the way you approach it is just different. It is such a cool guitar. I am 100% in love with this thing. Uh, this one's not going anywhere. This is one of those, you've seen the stack of guitars that I have around here that I keep for myself that don't get sold. This is in that pile. The McPherson Touring Carbon Fiber Guitar. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and the like button, all the bell and all the stuff that you normally do. There'll be a link to this. Uh, and I'll put a couple of other options down below too that I have and that I've used. Um, and but I, I definitely recommend you go check this out. At least go check out the website. Let McPherson know uh, that you're interested in the technology and interested in the concept. Even if it's a guitar that you're not gonna buy, they'll know that you're clicking around over there and checking it out. I'd love for you to tell them uh, that you saw this video, you know, and that you were interested in what may, some people may consider a weird guitar, but for me, it's the future. Uh, we will have more videos coming out later this week. We've got the podcast tomorrow. Uh, please. Uh, thank you to my Patreon supporters who make various things like this possible. And thank you to all of you who hit the subscribe button as well and support those links down below. We will see you in the next video.